Okay, so first things first, clear the car. Look at this though, this is the ice on the inside, that's so cool. Pattern. Well, it's looking pretty promising. Good morning. We are in the car park to go up to Benraki. As I was talking about in my Krigauer video recently. And we have all we need to be prepared. And I think we're ready. When I was clearing the car this morning, my hands got really cold. So I had to put on the mitts. It was so, so icy. I think it's going to be a beautiful day. So I've got my walking sticks and I've got a pair of... Um, and I just go on top of the boot like that. Because I don't want to be slipping down the mountain. So here's the map of the area. And you can kind of see the path to Benraki up there and also Craig Gower where we went up last time and we had a good view of Benraki. It could take anywhere between one and two hours to get up to the top, depending on how fast you walk. If you walk really fast you could even do it faster than that. There's not nearly as much snow here as we have uh, in Perth, which I find very interesting. So there's kind of three stages to walking up in Rocky. First you go through this little wood here and you've got a burn just here, gorge. There's not a lot of water coming through. So once you get through this wood, come to an open plain and you walk along for a while until you get to Benraki itself and so it's not such a difficult walk compared to some other ones it's quite pleasant actually until you get to Benraki when it gets much steeper so there you can see it it's pretty much all covered in snow I don't know if you can see, but everything's really shiny because of the recent frost. So, up here in Pitlochry, it was supposedly minus 16 degrees Celsius, which um, is perhaps not that impressive if you live in areas where that you get quite a lot of frost, like Canada. Myself, I've been out and about in Russia while well, it was minus 20 or minus 30 degrees and I think the worst part of it is just the face. Oh, I think my face just hurt pretty much when I was out doing that kind of weather. Well, this is the open area. I just got to and last time we were right up there so in my Craig Hour video we went up around the other side and then went all the way up to that top and then came down somewhere there and this time I'll be going this way and right up there I love any kind of patterns Let's get the wind blowing the snow in a particular way. But yeah, the snow situation here is already looking a lot more similar to the deep snow that we have in Perth. There's obviously way more snow up here than down there. And it's incredibly bright, so I'm going to be extra again and wear two hats. I like this one, it's, it really reminds me of uh, sand on the beach. 
the way it's uh, going across in waves. So for three days in a row we had snow in the UK and then since yesterday we had a bit of a break and rather than going yesterday I wanted to go up the mountain today just because kind of for reasons of safety because as you can see people have already tested the path even then you see some of these deeper holes in the snow so the snow is pretty frozen but as you can see there's always the chance of getting a patch that's not so firm underneath so that's why one needs to be really careful when going up a mountain with lots of snow on it and a pre-trodden flattened path like that is obviously always safer than going onto the fresh snow Actually, now that I think about it, it is a little bit like walking through the desert. Oop. There. Oh well. There's barely any cloud in the sky today though. So the view should be very good. So obviously if you have snowshoes you can have a much easier time, probably. My progress is rather slow, but that's okay, I've got time. So this portion of the path is my favourite just because it winds around a couple of times and gradually the mountains revealed. Apart from being right on the top of course, which I'm looking forward to. I can more or less see the little tracks going up. And these are individual tracks that people have taken up to the top. how that looks. There's a little resting point here where you can get ready to go up the mountain. I think I'm gonna to have to wear my mittens for this. Um, I think the best way to get up deep snow is just to follow somebody else's footsteps. Otherwise you might just uh, get stuck with half of your body and then struggle to get out. So there's a massive lip of snow sitting right up there. It's hard to get up. It seems a few people have gone up this way. Oh wow. Looks like I found part of the original path. to speak to the camera from the front so I'm gonna just have to be very close up here. It's way windier up here in the mountain and it's really cold so I'm definitely not underprepared this time. Uh, it was um, not too bad coming up here just following people's footsteps but there's a whole more of mountain to go. Look at all those hills that have shown up in the meantime and the sky looks amazing. Getting closer. It's 
So we're almost there. You can see the trick point. No, it's not a trick point. You can see the cairn uh, of the top right up there. Even more sculptures. It's so cold up there, my face. Oh god. Okay. Now we're on the way down. Alright. Now comes the fun part. Now he could still get stuck in the snow, so this is to be done with caution. Oh, we can see the raven circling above the top yeah it was basically impossible to speak up there impossible to share anything else there will be annotations I'm sure wow so cold up there so windy well I'm looking forward to getting home and getting a hot cup of tea See? Much easier. Oh. Apparently it took us about four hours to get to the top. It felt like forever, that's for sure. Once again, I love all of the ice sculptures up here. I think nature is so cool. This is absolutely beautiful. I think it was definitely worth it. Would you recommend going up in the snow? Only if you really like a challenge. I think it took me about uh, 15 minutes just to get from the top down to this bit. It's ridiculous. About to drink my water and then I realized it's frozen. It's because I had it on the side of the bag. I think it's even ice on the inside. <sighs> so it took me half an hour to basically do the same distance as we did in three hours on the way up. Find the tracks of uh, snow here. So in the end, I didn't end up using any of my fancy equipment. I didn't use these sticks because it was more convenient not to. I didn't put any gaiters on because my trousers were just sitting so tight against my boots that I didn't need to, and. It wasn't particularly icy, so I didn't wear my ice grips, but I'm happy that I brought them nonetheless. So thank you for coming along once more today. I hope you enjoyed a walk. I hope you thought it was exciting. It was really hard. I think I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have pretty sore muscles tomorrow, but I think it was worth it.
Thank you for watching.